Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We go racing in all four series of Legend Series Trucks, Xfinity, and Cup at Watkins Glen for the first round elimination race. But first, we finally have the Ryan Blaney Hendrick Motorsports reveal coming to you guys right here. A body armor number 25 car that he will be driving as our teammate at Hendrick Motorsports next season. This car was made by FRG Designs. You can follow him on Twitter. I'll put his link for his Twitter in the description. A beautiful paint scheme and and he's as well uh, made a Ty Gibbs 11 car that I will be revealing very soon as well. So stay tuned on that. But I think that looks great. It's going to look awesome on track when we're competing against Ryan, our teammate, next season. But now we come through into the NASCAR Legend Series here presented by Drive Through Designs. And we were once again at Jefferson Raceway for the second time this season. Very short race here. It's only a couple of laps long because we don't do very long races here. And we, of course, missed the playoffs, unfortunately, now as Travis Brown. He was starting down here in about P23 and he was one of those playoff drivers so not looking good uh, at the beginning of this race for a guy like Travis Brown now as he definitely has a lot of work to do to move his way forwards and continue to be safe in the playoff situation so at this point Jeff Gordon by the way was leading the way right now he just tested a, a little uh, sprint car or something like that I saw uh, just yesterday and now here he is on the dirt side in our NASCAR Heat 5 career mode uh, out front so a little bit later on I was now up to 16th place and we were moving our way slowly but surely uh, for Forwards now as we came through straight to the final lap. I was up to P12. Made a bit of a mistake though. Jeff Gordon, by the way, he was already coming through to win the race, by the way. Then I have some contact with Austin Dillon. He goes for a big slide right there. We somehow narrowly get around him and do not hit him. The number 02 of Christopher Bell was able to get in front of us there for P13. So we would end up settling for 14th place here from Jefferson Raceway. So the big question, of course, is what was the playoff grid going to look like? Uh, you're going to have to wait to, until the end of the episode to see that. But I can confirm if you're maybe a fan of David Schildhouse, you're going to be pretty happy now as he finishes sixth there in this race. So things were looking pretty good for him. And of course, Travis Brown took quite the hit now as we would come through into the Truck Series side of things. This time, we were at Bristol Motor Speedway here for the Truck Series. As usual, we have a subscriber in the truck for us this time. We had Sean Healy in the truck here for the UNOH 200 at Bristol Motor Speedway under the lights getting ready to go green here uh, in the playoffs. This is an elimination race here in the Truck Series playoffs. So... Uh, uh, you got to be right on the money here if you want to make sure you get into that next round. A great track, in my opinion, to end a playoff round at Bristol Motor Speedway. Now, Sean, he qualified up in the top five. Things were looking good right off the bat here now as he was on that inside line. Just an easy opportunity to make some passes here now as he went through a turns a three and out of turns four. Now, as it would take him a few laps to really get rolling now as he likes to be up on that second lane to really make something happen now. Uh, and as he came through at a turns, he had now gotten past that 23. And you'd make few more passes he got up to p3 now was side by side with the 99 of ben Rhodes, and he was battling it out for that second position these two would continue side by side for a handful of laps and then with a now just over a lap to go he actually gets into the side of ben Rhodes, down into turn three now Rhodes will go for a bit of a slide up the track and that allows sean to get the momentum out of turns four to get clear but now white flag out in the air and sean is going to have to use that bumper if he wants to be able to win this race over the number 22 of austin wayne self and he's close enough to do exactly that as they go down into turn three but he's not going to use the bumper. He's going to slide up the inside into the side of Austin Wayne's self as they come through the turns where they're going to start crashing. Three cars all crashing across the line and Sean Healy manages to win crashing even after the race here from Bristol Motor Speedway just barely over Austin Wayne's self. So he gets going racing the win here in the truck series in dramatic fashion to say the least here. Uh, but of course cannot complain. We ended up uh, in victory lane. So happy with that there. Great effort by Sean and there you see the two drivers in eliminated from the playoffs Brett Holmes as well as Austin Hill there in that 16 so unfortunate for them but now we come through into the Xfinity series here from once again at Bristol Motor Speedway unfortunately Paul Menard he failed inspection again so we were starting at the back cannot be uh, having stuff like this happen at this point in the season because now we're well into the playoffs getting underway so we cannot have something like this happen where we're going to give up some crucial points now because no matter what with the length of this race we probably will not get the finish we would have gotten say if we would qualify maybe 15th or even 10th now uh, so Paul he had jumped up to the outside he was making some big moves right off the bat uh, and there really wasn't a whole lot going on in this race other than Paul just jumping up to the top and making some moves and then a little bit later on he had gotten to the back of the 36 of Alex LeBay made a move to the outside of him but that was pretty much the last move Paul was able to make throughout this whole race right here on that 36 of LeBay now as he would get past him sure enough but then we come through to the final lap of this race uh, down into turns three and four it was not going to be a great finish 
minutes for the Food City 300 for this going racing team here in the Xfinity Series as Paul comes through out of turns four crosses his line for a disappointing 19th place finish as Sheldon Creed wins over Max Gutierrez. Gutierrez never even made the playoffs. Tony Bredinger there rounds up the top three. Rajah Carruth just outside of the top ten as well as Kevin Magnuson and there you see us down in P19. So an unfortunate start to this episode there um, or at least to the Xfinity side of things for Paul Menard now as he's two points still above the cut line. Sheldon Creed, of course, advances his way into the next round with that win. Bradinger is 46 points above the cut line now as we come through into the Cup Series. Uh, unfortunately, I actually skipped, I did not mean to skip qualifying, but I accidentally skipped it and uh, I decided to not even bother going back. So we would just jump right into the race here from Watkins Glen. All right, boys, we're already locked in on points. There's no reason we can't get aggressive and physical and go for a win. So let's go have a good one today. And there you hear myself on the radio to the team here as we're getting ready to take the green flag. So we're going to be starting at the back because, of course, I skipped qualifying. So Haley Deegan, by the way, on the pole alongside CJ McLaughlin. Zane Smith gave up his qualifying spot for new tires. And then Matt DiBettadetto, he failed optical scanning station multiple times. So he will be sent to the back of the field as well here. So we're going to be starting alongside the number 40 target Chip Ganassi racing car of Timmy Hill here. Now it's Haley Deegan and CJ McLaughlin lead the field to the green flag as the round Round of one, your round of 16, sorry, round one of the playoffs the elimination race is underway here from Watkins Glen. So a very interesting scenario where especially a guy like Chase Elliott, he comes into this race as you see a massive checkup into turns one, by the way, but Elliott comes into this race three points, I believe it is, below the cut line, but you put him on a track like Watkins Glen where he's very successful, I can see him still advancing into that next round of the playoffs. It's not been a pretty round for him so far. Brandon Jones and that Gun Brothers racing team, they've really turned it up, but now you put them on a road course they could be at risk of getting eliminated to come into this race to think about 10 points above the cut line so and of course myself guys like Denny Hamlin I believe in Harrison Burton we're all pretty much locked into the next round on points so we have absolutely nothing to worry about here and we're really just here in Watkins Glen today to have fun and maybe get some playoff points to now give us more of an advantage going into that round of 12 which is going to be uh, in my opinion a very tricky round we got Darlington we got Chicago land as well as we got Talladega Super Speedway so anything can happen in that round of 12 I think in the first race is Chicago and I look at all three of those tracks I can see a lot of things going wrong at all three of those Darlington something always goes wrong there Talladega you never know if we're going to win or if we're going to run 25th and then Chicago land I've never really had great pace there but hopefully we can maybe get a top 10 is kind of what we're going to aim for now as you see at the end of lap one here we got to the back of Denny Hamlin I was giving him a bit of a break there I just kind of settled in behind him for a minute now as that we would be able to eventually they'll be able to pounce on this opportunity here we got past Ricky Stenos Jr. down towards the bus stop we got past Hamlin lunge up the right hand side as well of Ryan Priest now and we are just continuing to move our way forwards very quickly by the way now as the 78 of McLaughlin by the way was out front but I was able to attack anywhere it felt like I could jump to the left hand side just like this right here and just drive right on by that 16 of Justin Haley then Kyle Busch was now out in front with two laps to go in this short four lap stage now as we got past that 96 got brothers racing car Brandon Jones look up the right hand side of Eric Almarola who just announced retirement and one last episode by the way, back-to-back -back Martinsville uh, wins in the fall for Eric Almarola now as we would also lunge to the left-hand side of Anthony Alfredo. We just continue moving our way forwards now as we came through to the final lap. Now on the inside of Kyle Larson. I was very confident with the speed that we had in this car so far now as we had also gotten to the back of our rival of Joey Logano and we're just going to try and lunge up the left hand side of him here but I got a little bit sideways there that kind of messed me up a little bit now but we're still going to maintain side by side here through the S's a little bit dangerous to do that with the rival but it ends up working out anyways here so we move now up into the top half of the field as we try to run down that number 29 of Cole Custer who's way off the pace here as we go down this back straightaway and sure enough I look up the right hand side here and into the bus stop now we clear that 29 of custom move up to p19 as we've had a stellar first stage from the back to 19th place here as we go down into the carousel kyle bush already into the penultimate corner heading down towards that final turn to win the first stage here from watkins glenn now as we close in on the back of daniel hammer cares we might even be able to get p19 or sorry p18 before the stage comes to a close here as we come through that penultimate corner for the final time here in stage one heading down towards the final turn but we actually lose the car 
we crash into the wall. Around we go. Very lucky to escape a DNF right there. We get the car back going, but a bunch of damage onto the front end. And stage one comes to a close as 10th place crosses the line. And we settle for P22. But we are unbelievably lucky to not have a DNF right there. Because I do have DNFs turned on. Uh, so I was very, very surprised that we just did not DNF from that incident. But that completely wipes all of the progress we had just gained throughout this first stage because now we have 13 seconds of damage we got to come in and repair the car put two cans of fuel in it as well as well uh, put four fresh tires on it so we lose everything that we had just gained just off of a simple mistake it's basically i came out of that uh, penultimate turn and i was on the throttle too hard on that curb and it just shot the car around and i tried to pull it back right in time but unfortunately it didn't quite work so very unfortunate way to end for the first stage but now we're back underway for the start of stage two and of course now, in Watkins Glen, it's time to get amped. From the back of the pack to 19th place in just one lap during the amp segment. You saw it all there. We had a bit of a run in with our rival of Joey Logano. Not really much of a surprise there. But now we look to the left hand side of that 19 of Harrison Burton. And we were just hauling through the field. And you can see on the track map there was a huge gap between Daniel Suarez as well as who was ever in about second or third place. So there was a car up there holding everybody up. And that was just kind of playing into my advantage of course. So now I was able to get past our future teammate there, Ryan Blaney. Look up the left-hand side of Daniel Hemrick. Make a pass on him as well. And now we have a nice run here. We're going to make a three wide with the 33 of Cindric as well as the 88 of William Byron. So as we go down into that penultimate turn, we have now entered the top 15. And then sure enough, on lap three of four, now up the right-hand side of Brian Kozlowski in the 41. One of the playoff contenders along with Bubba Wallace as well as we go down towards this bus stop. But now a chance to enter the top 10 before the second stage even comes to a close. We've gained about 30 positions just about in the first two two and three quarters of a lap here in stage two now as we're gonna get right to the back of the 78 of McLaughlin we're gonna make a three wind now with him as well as at Bubba Wallace as we are just slicing our way through this field very consistently great tremendous speed in this car and it was really showing at this point now as we come through and now out of the penultimate turn a bit of a mistake though and that allowed the number 23 of Bubba Wallace to kind of attack on it but fortunately out of that final turn we were able to stay out in front of him here so now as we go down this front straightaway we come through to start the final lap of stage two and Suarez still by the way driving away from the field right now as he had some issues recently in the playoffs so he is not in the greatest position by any means here so he's going to need some luck if he wants to get into that next round of the playoffs and right now he's leading doing everything he needs to be doing and now, of course, we're closing in on the 48 and the 9 of Bowman and Elliott, our two Hendrick Motorsports teammates. Now, of course, Elliott not going to be a teammate next season. You see myself getting aggressive there. I made a three wide with both Bowman and Elliott. Chase needs every single point he can get, but I was not wasting my time. So I was getting a move on with it here on this final lap of this second stage now to the left hand side of Haley Deegan here and then we got her teammate of Chase Briscoe up there in that fourth position so we easily clear that monster energy number four car no problem whatsoever getting by her and now as we go down towards this penultimate turn we're going to be looking at a top five finish here in stage two which I did not expect by any means now as I almost make the same mistake that I did at the end of stage one fortunately though I got off that curve uh, right away and fortunately we did not have any issues so out of that final turn down this front straight away for the final time here in stage two sure enough it is going to be a very strong top five finish here in this second stage from Watkins Glen
Everything looking pretty good right now for a guy like Daniel Suarez. Of course, now Kyle Busch up there in second place. You got Eric Jones there in the McLaren 0-2 car as well, having a very strong run. So a lot of guys, of course, having a strong run now as we're going to come into the pit lane and we're going to take four fresh tires and two cans of fuel here. So uh, a pretty straightforward call. I didn't really want to make any adjustments, but we have a really good pit stop. Again, two spots there overtaking both Jones as well as Chase Briscoe. So we move up now to row number two, right behind our going racing teammate of Daniel Suarez. Now as the green flag is back out, 10 laps to go here in Watkins Glen. The situation currently is if it stays green, we are going to have to make a green flag pit stop very, very late in this race. So we definitely got to keep that in mind. Hopefully, though, that will not be the case. We don't want to have to risk maybe speeding or something now. Suarez and Kyle Busch continue to battle it out side by side for that front position. Of course, you guys know who I'm going to help. I'm going to help out uh, the going racing driver of Daniel Suarez here as we go down this back straightaway, giving him a big push here down towards that bus up, and we both get clear of the 18 and Kyle Busch just showing the difference in momentum right there. Nearly gave Suarez too much of a push. He's got a little bit sideways there into that bus up, but fortunately, nothing happened out of that now. So as we go down in through the carousel, and I was trying to do the same move that I had done throughout the rest of the field. Try to just go around to that left-hand side of the carousel and see if I can pass somebody on the outside. But immediately I realized with Suarez, he's got a lot more speed and I was not going to be able to make that happen. So now down towards that penultimate turn, just trying to maintain with him at this point now. It's definitely Suarez and Kyle Busch are the two fastest guys here right now other than us here in this exalted number 24 Chevrolet Camaro for Hendrick Motorsports. So as we came to to complete this first and opening lap of stage three, I was pretty happy with the pace that we were setting. Certainly seemed good enough to at least hang with Daniel Suarez, but is it going to be enough to get around Daniel Suarez? That's really the big question. We lose a little bit of time there in turns one, but I would make it up throughout the rest of the lap. We come through out of the penultimate turn now, heading towards lap 17. The caution actually comes out with nine laps to go in this race, and now we are going to be okay on field to make it to the end. So no green flag pit stops or pit stops whatsoever are going to be necessary at this point. So we're all going to now stay out and have a a late dash here for the race victory now is uh, I was definitely not sure how this was going to work out because I think it's only going to be probably five laps or so to go when we get back going but now we are joining Daniel Suarez on the front row here going for the lead down into turns one now of course Suarez if he wins he gets into the playoffs and I think he's pretty much got to win if he wants to get into the next round of the playoffs but obviously I want to help my teammate or my going racing driver I should say but at the same time I want to make sure we get a win for our own team pick up win number three on the season and get some extra playoff points going into that round of 12. So Suarez though, he gets clear out of turns one down into through the S's in turns two and three. So not the restart we were quite looking for here now as we come through on the exit of the S's. We gotta get aggressive here if we wanna make a move on Daniel Suarez. And there comes the move right there now as we're going to go all the way into the grass here to try and make this move on Daniel Suarez and that yellow heart Camaro now as we're going to still be side by side through the bus stop. Doesn't quite work out in my favor. So we have to settle there for P2 again now as I try to once again lunge up that left hand side into the carousel. This time we actually get alongside Suarez that go a little bit too wide right there out of that final exit of the carousel and we lose some time. But now once again though still at his left rear now at his door and now even down the short straightaway towards that penultimate corner of the race for the victory is now on here as we get clear of Suarez on the exit of the corner. Kyle Busch tries to fight up the left hand side. Doesn't have enough and now Kyle Busch slides through into second place but Suarez fights back up his inside. They would get caught up side by side for a few moments. That allows me to break away a little bit. So now as we came through to lap 22 things were looking pretty good. Three laps to go. Kyle Busch though would eventually come out on top of that battle with Daniel Suarez and he was starting to actually run myself down in the closing moments of this race. So this battle for sure was just starting to heat up here here now as we were approaching just uh, the final two laps another mistake right there out of that penultimate corner and that allowed Kyle to get even closer as we were approaching the final couple laps of this race so things were not looking good all of a sudden as Kyle Busch is continuing to put on some pressure now as we came through approaching the final lap here on Watkins Glen now down into that penultimate turn again Kyle Busch makes a move up the left hand side we're going to be even on the exit of the corner down towards that final turn Suarez right up here in the mix as well but we get clear right there on the exit of the corner and now hold off both Suarez and Kyle Busch are going to be side by side once again as we go down this front straightaway white flag in the air we've had two wins this season now 
knows we're going to be defensive over Suarez into turns one and we hold on to the lead now as we just have to hang on for about another minute or so and we will be a now three time winner on the season we won at Indianapolis in the Brickyard 400 then we won at our home track at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park and now here we are at Watkins Glen trying to pick up win number three on the season which I believe would put us now second on the list for most wins on this season at least here as we go down through this bus stop for the final time just no mistakes really was the big thing now as we come through that carousel now Suarez within striking distance if I make a quite a big mistake but fortunately no mistakes are coming right now as we come through out of that carousel down this back straightaway for the final time here from Watkins Glen International now as we have just two corners to hang on down into the penultimate corner we do uh, go we got to be very careful right here to make sure we don't get up on this curb and spin the car out we got on the curb didn't spin the car out now as we go down into this final turn for the final time Suarez not close enough and that's going to get him eliminated from the playoffs as we come through to win in Watkins Glen. We went from the back of the pack all the way to 20th or so place, 19th place in stage one. We crashed. We went to the back again and we raced our way all the way to the front of the pack here and won this race. What a race it was for us. Uh, a definitely a big statement that that Hendrick Motorsports speed is definitely back here because what a rocky start it was to the first probably half of the regular season and now we've just been on a roll lately now winning at indianapolis and then we won in canada and now we have won at watkins Glen. so two road course wins on the season three overall uh wins on the season there as you see the rest of the finishing order on your screen elliot got p12 brandon jones had a decent finish as well up inside the top 20 but we're gonna see what that playoff grid looks like and who got eliminated christian eckes was the only dnf by the way but there you see it bell actually gets eliminated eliminated to our surprise by seven points he was in the top five in the standings all regular season long and he gets eliminated Suarez out by nine Priest as well uh, gets eliminated now so very very unfortunate especially for a guy like Christopher Bell I definitely felt bad for him now uh, as you look at the playoff grid here on the NASCAR Legend Series David Schildhouse above the cut line by 12 points Larson above by three Newman 46 Stewart uh, is currently tied with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. for the last spot and there's two races left before that final four gets decided at Eldora in the Legend Series now as we look through the rest of the standings here in the truck series we are 12 points to the good going into this next race so things are looking pretty good for us there uh for that next round of the trucks and then on the Xfinity side of things we are good by two points above the cut line going into Las Vegas for the second race of the playoffs so now we'll, of course, get a look at what the Cup Series playoff grid is going to look like going into this next round. And we were, what, 20 points above the cut line coming into this last one. So we gained, what, one point overall, which is better than nothing. So 21 above the cut line going into this round of 12, which is going to be very, very tough. Noah Gregson, by the way, was the other guy, the fourth driver, to get eliminated from the last round. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, you do know what to do. In the next round of the playoffs, we got Chicagoland, Darlington, and Talladega Super Speedway. Going to be a very tricky round. And then you see the next round of uh, and then we have uh, what Kansas, Mid Ohio, and Iowa, and then of course the championship at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Uh, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode. I really do appreciate the continued support you guys have been giving me here uh, throughout this whole NASCAR Heat Five crew mode. And of course, want to say thank you to the Go On Racing members of MJ, Joseph Nine Thousand and One, Timothy Arline, Bubba Junior, Brett Durward, Dark Gengar Gaming, AJ Fasur, Russell Dixon, Kenneth Barnett, Dana Ninety Three Zero Two, as well as King Matt XL. Thank you guys once again for the continued support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great. Great day, everybody.